man. It's been three years since we haven't done this, and Gymkhana 2022 is going to be absolutely amazing. I promise you this. Make sure you guys come on out. Admission is absolutely free. When I say free, it's me, right? You guys know me, and I love free. So I want to invite the entire nation to come hang out with us down here at the Police Sports Club grounds, Eve Leary, starting at 10 o'clock. Jim Kana, Police Sports Club ground, 10 a.m. in the morning. We're going to do it all day. Fun for the entire family. Food and drinks on sale. When I say food and drinks, I mean regular, degular food and drinks, all right? The proper things. Look out for it. Attractions like the Greasy Pig, the Majorettes, the Dog and Horse competitions, displays, scouts, and they got a great, great, great exhibition with the motorcyclists. I can't wait to see you guys out there. Jim Connor 2022. I'm going to be there, and my brother Gordon Mosley is going to be there as well. So I can't wait to see you come hang out with us on the 8th of May, starting at 10 o'clock. Police Sports Club grounds, Eve Larry. Casual, I love you, my nation. Gymkhana 2022 Indeed. is around the corner. Indeed it is, indeed it is. It is in the, around the corner and it's... Uh, the what of the can buzz. patrons expect from Gymkhana this time around? Well, we're looking to start with a bang from the Mount Mansion Kennedy Sections perspective. And so we'll have some, some old favorites in, in addition to some new trills. And so I mean, uh, when it, we'll have a, a new twist to one of our one of our signature events, the uh, the Bonds race. We'll have more of a race into it, and uh, we'll have a new. Event. Hold a second, you said Bonds race, so is yes. the animals doing the Bonds no. race or? Oh no no no! No, no because no. I was I was I was just thinking that maybe you know, uh, if you get to see the, the dogs or the or the horses, or the horses um, doing a Bonds race, but. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> this but is for the for the. Uh, this is for the the troopers. Uh -huh. And uh, we've added a new twist to the race mm -hmm. to make it a bit more exciting because it's been a while, and we of course we try to come with something new every time so that we can excite the members of the public. And uh, there's a new twist to the Bonds race. We're we're, we're introducing in Georgetown. Because we would have had this uh, done in Bartica, we're introducing a flag race. A flag race to Georgetown. And of course, all of these events will, will are aimed at demonstrating the level of commitment that you have to put into working with the animals. And uh, demonstrating the skill that the troopers would have developed over the years. And so the flag race, we have our old favorite, always a favorite, the musical chairs, the kill Charlie, and and these events we are, we, we will also have uh, the usual. We have we have a pony ride. We have different events to ensure that the public are entertained. We're going as far as uh, we're not responsible. Of course, we have the greasy pig and these kind of things. Yes, we'll have the greasy pig on the stand. And so, and so it's, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have our, our novelty events. Our novelty events, egg and spoon race, tug of war, these kind of things. So they can expect to be thrilling and entertained. Come Jim Connor for the present team. Force. I have worked around 
most of my time which I've spent at the general office, which is dealing with admin. However, in 2018, I was transferred to the outstation of a division then, and I've worked around in that division. Lastly, on the 1st of September 2020, I came to this location, which is the Juliet Griffith Daycare Center, and I'm here presently. I am a mother of four children and nine grandchildren. I'm a wife, a sister, and a niece. I'm an all Was it your thing to be here at the daycare center? Right. Well, actually, it wasn't my actual choice in choosing to come here, but I guess it's because of my qualification, whereby I have knowledge in child care and child psychology through the program of social work, which, I was, which was done at the University of Guyana, and a bachelor degree program. I guess the administration saw it fit to put me here so that I can be of great input to the children and the staff at this location. Before the listeners ask, do you think or do you see yourself as someone who would have been working with children? You did uh, psychology, so did you see and social work, but did you see yourself working with children? To be honest with you, it is always my aim, my goal to be around children because even though when I choose to do social work, one of the questions at the interview at the university is for me to work with children. I said that from the beginning because I always see the need of upbringing children because for me I believe if children are not upbringing in the right way then we won't have eligible and perfect adults in life. Okay, uh, what can you tell us about the Juliet Griffith Daycare Center? When was the daycare started? In my knowledge, the daycare was established on the 3rd of October, 1994. It was established in collaboration with the Ex-Police Wives Association through one Juliet Griffith who is the, who, who was at that time the wife of a senior officer of this organization and it was established for the caring of police children and to the extension the members of Kingston and the type of Okay, great. I did hear you say that it was established for mainly police children. But can you say, who can join the daycare? Every child that is of the age of, or between 18 months to five years, that are members of police staff children. So it's only for police? Yes, it's only for police. So would there be any concessions for persons like nurses or doctors who are probably working around this area that is requesting for their child to join this daycare, would they have any concessions? Sure. To be honest, the concession for police, for other members or other obscures, wouldn't be given by me because of the fact that all monies payable for fees are being deducted through a salary scale. And if we have our nurses and teachers, then we will not be able to have those money will be not the true, the finance. Okay. So what are the opening hours for the daycare? The daycare opened from 7.30 in the morning and closed when the last child is being picked up. The normal time it should be 5.30, but then you can't put the children out if the parents are not here at 5.30. So somebody will have to remain with them until that child or children is moved. Okay, so what can parents and guardians expect when they're bringing their child here at the center? Certainly, they can expect a well child growth and development of each child because of the fact we 
don't only take care of children in the realm of looking at them to make sure that they don't fall or whatever. We try to enrich them with some sort of knowledge as for the age and the growth of development. Okay, great. So um, I know there are some some children who are who are at the nursery level and they would go to the regular schooling in the morning. What provisions do you make for those children after they would have finished the, the, the session of your school? Those children, when they come to the daycare after school session, that's after 12, we would cater for them as a meal, a break, a lunch. Then we would have them have a rest period. Then they would have an afternoon snack. Thereafter, we would have them have a, what you call a relaxation hour where they either learn some nursery rhyme. We don't pressure them because they would have already learned their curriculum in school. They would have already learned the work in school. So what we do is just like a revision through play. When we say true play, it means like a nursery rhyme. We bring back a nursery rhyme in a little movie. Let them watch a little play learn game or whatever. We don't right. teach them again. I heard you mention that you give them a, a lunch and a snack. So the children that are coming to this daycare, are they well provided for in terms of meals? Certainly. After acceptance and general assemblies and prayer, all the children that are here in the morning will have a breakfast. Well, solid breakfast, I can say to that. Then they will have their activities according to their groupings. Then they will have the lunch, which is prepared again. They will have the wash up time, snack, rest time, and then they will have an afternoon snack again. Is there an extra cost for meals? No, one fee has been deducted, and that is $4,000 per child, and all these things are in the program. So, during the COVID-19 pandemic, one of the things that would have happened is that, uh, like so many other things in Guyana, um, there was a closure, and it would have made it hard on many parents. Um, the Guyana Police Force would have seen the need also to restart uh, this um, daycare center, um, albeit at another location. Tell us about how you, that startup happened and what has been the response so far. During the COVID-19, even though I was not here at the shutting, starting of the COVID-19, but in my time here, this daycare wasn't closed, right? This daycare was open throughout, but what would happen, we'll find we would not have had all the children coming like before, because I think most organizations or department would have been working according to a shift system or the on the off, so most of the children would have only been coming when their parents apparently is not at work. Apparently is at work and don't have anyone at home to keep it. Right? But um, that time we had, it was a little challenging for us because we had to deal with persons and police who bring in their children here and we had to ensure that those children would not have contracted any bacteria. And even for our staff, so it was challenging, but we implement system where we have frequent sanitization, washing up frequently, sanitizing up the desks and the areas that the children would have been dwelling, mattresses and sheets and everything that they would have had to be using, just to ensure that all areas are safe for them. You're now in a spanking new building. Um, where it originally was, uh, that was torn down and uh, uh, rebuilt. Um, and uh, this is getting ready for its official opening uh, tomorrow. Uh, tell us about uh, the plans and the excitement about uh, actually coming back here and into this new building that you have now. True, it is very exciting for me because coming over now to this new building and this new location, it gives me more scope in dealing with the children, in enriching the children's knowledge because we will have our lawn, we will have more space, you know, we will be able to be there for the children more. Because children need not only internal, but they also need outdoor and 
That is what we could not have had over at the other center. But good fortune that we are here, we are able to do that. I'm very, very happy. I'm really, really excited and elated for this because it really will give us a chance to explore more and to bring up the children in a bit of given, given the fact that you share space with the officers, uh, a mess, uh, it's in the same compound. What securities or barriers you're dealing with children who may run uh, when you take them out into the open? What security you have in place to be able to keep them uh, where they need to be and not beyond? The lawn area, to my knowledge, would be sometimes able to barricade. We won't take them out, out there in that open space, not now. It should have barriers. I spoke with the twice the administration and she said they would be barricading an area for the lawn for the children so that they will not be able to be running helter skelter when we go there. And in terms of uh, your program, outside of uh, you know what else is, as, as a mother was uh, concerned about, about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, and that kind of thing, the sleep and so on. Uh, you did mention for those who come after, um, who go to nursing school and come afterwards, you're not going to pressure them with schoolwork, uh, so to speak, but um, what kind of educational program um, you're going to be able to put in place or you have in place at the daycare center? For those children who are here, the toddlers, we have um, programs such as meta learning, shape, for the toddlers, we allow them to search their environment, like feel things, hold things, because they won't understand much of a shape and uh, whatever. So what we do is to give them objects to feel and we can say to them what it is. We give them, show them the letters and we say, well, we have some very brilliant ones too. Who would able to say this is letter A and can identify it after. We have programs that we teach them words, we teach them math, we teach them social studies, and we teach them science in their level. Right, because in the words we will have them with the alphabet, colors and so forth. Math, we will show them, you know, one, two, three, we don't go farther than that for that age. And then in the social studies, we will tell them things about like the name of the country, we show them the flags, the flag of Guyana, we will show them um, um, the prime ministers, the president and those persons in that bracket. We will then like them with knowledge of that. For the science, we take them around in the area and we have them learning their surroundings. That's, this is a grass, this is sand, this is mud and water and so forth. And that goes through for all the different grouping, but at a different level as the group moves. Do you find, um, as you did mention the different levels, but do you find um, that evidently some children grasp and learn differently and you perhaps may need to uh, work a program that is different for some as opposed to some of the others who you might have to take some extra care with or is it a possibility also that maybe children with special needs who belong to uh, members of the Ghana Police Force can have them at the daycare? Um, children do learn differently. We do have children that some learn faster than some and some will grass faster than some. In, th in that case, you will find, for the matter of fact, we have like four nurses attached to the children. So if we do recognize that a child needs, for me, if I recognize that a child needs special care or a child needs a little more attention, then I will say to the nurse, well, one of y'all take this child individually and sit with this child and bring this child. I do will tell them that. If, when it comes to special needs, we are not prepared for that. We don't accept special needs children. If the special needs of itself need special care and special attention, special training, right? This daycare is not set aside for that, right? As in training, we have to have special needs training. The staff, they are not specialized for that. Okay. Uh, you did mention that you were older of a bachelor's science degree in social work. Do you have any of you, or your other staff, are they qualified as well in the field? 
Um, yes, the other child staff, they do have certificates in early childhood development. Some of them have one, some of them have one and two, and some of them have two. I think a few of them not, not complete, but they do have some knowledge of that. That's one of the things that the administration, I always say that they should ensure that just to start, they at least they should have a certificate in child care or early childhood development. Because there are certain key areas that you have to understand about children. So would that be something that you would be pushing for for your staff to further their education, especially in the field of, of child care development? I do it all the time. All the time. Since I'm here, I tell them they need to qualify themselves, they need to increase the, the academic status when it comes. If they're seeing this department or this job here as a career for them, then they need to. I do it all the time and I encourage them every day. <laughs> How do you handle discipline or disciplinary matters with children? Um, children and discipline. We know we have to discipline children, but um, when you're dealing with disciplinary children, then you have to be careful. Because children, for me, children live what they learn. They learn what they see. Most of, time, most of the time, they imitate an adult around their environment, who they're close to. So to deal with that matter, or to deal with that child, you have to go to the ground. Right? Because we, I can train up that child here, but if that child is going back into an environment which is neglectful or which is not functioning, then I'm just wasting my time. So when I, if I observe that a child has a specific behavior, what I will do, I will call the parent. I would ask the nurse to let me see the parent, and I will talk to the parent and try to find out what is going on with that child. Right? But Otherwise, you know, in the normal play and run, if a child does something and it needs to be correct, then we will tell the child that he shouldn't do it. We don't beat no children here. We don't give lashes. We try to talk and we try to find other means, like where we might say, okay, you come, you come. We normally will bring them in my office and have them sit there for a while and say, okay, you're prepared to behave yourself now. You're prepared to hear. Are you going to go back and pinch? No nurse. Yes, I said, okay, no nurse. You don't want to hear you pinching because pinching is not nice. Right. Would you like me to pinch you? No, I said, well, then you don't pinch anyone else. I'm not saying that. But that's as much we can do. We don't need No licks at all. <laughs> We're not so, committed to do that. So obviously one of the things I know with many uh, uh, policemen and women, uh, especially for those who work uh, in, the, in the city, uh, they may be living in various areas, whether across the river, on the coast, up the highway. Uh, and since you did mention it is for policemen, women, their children, can they also access uh, uh, the services of this state? Yeah, yeah, as long as they are police officers, they can. They can. It doesn't matter where they live, they would have to work out the ways and getting the child to and collect it. And the day's opening times and the days? The day's opening is from Monday to Friday. 7 30 to last time pick up which we end them after 5 30 5 30 and then after that all right sergeant anything else you'd like to make mention of now that you're at your new location which is going to be opening tomorrow with lots of pomp and ceremony and you'd like to advise uh, policemen and women about why they should have their children here it's one of the best daycares as opposed to going to an outside daycare. Yeah, I would say to policemen and women that they all should bring their children here because we care for them, we train them. It's less costly, I know for sure, in taking your child out there. And um, they're close to, and it's a place where they can all come in and feel free to talk to me or anyone of the staff when it comes to their children. So I would advise them, come to the police daycare, and experience the good teaching and the good training that myself and my staff have to offer.
Hey man, it's been three years since we haven't done this and Gymkhana 2022 is going to be absolutely amazing. I promise you this. Make sure you guys come on out. Admission is absolutely free. When I say free, it's me, right? You guys know me and I love free. So I want to invite the entire nation to come hang out with us down here at the Police Sports Club grounds. Eve Leary starting at 10 o'clock. Gymkhana. Police Sports Club ground, 10 a.m. in the morning. We're going to do it all day. Fun for the entire family. Food and drinks on sale. When I say food and drinks, I mean regular, degular food and drinks, all right? The proper things. Look out for it. Attractions like the Greasy Pig, the Majorettes, the Dog and Horse competitions, displays, scouts, and they got a great, great, great exhibition with the motorcyclists. I can't wait to see you guys out there. Jim Connor 2022. I'm going to be there, and my brother Gordon Mosley is going to be there as well. So I can't wait to see you come hang out with us on the 8th of May, starting at 10 o'clock. Police Sports Club grounds, Eve Larry. Casual, I love you, my nation.